Hello everyone and welcome back. So as I'm sure you're aware, one of the most anticipated DLCs for Jurassic World Evolution 2 was undoubtedly the Dominion Biosyn expansion. Now of course there's several reasons as to why this DLC was so highly anticipated, but I'm here to talk about one in particular and that is the Dimetrodon. Now, the Dimetrodon is probably one of the more underrated prehistoric creatures that we got in this DLC and that's understandable because this DLC brought us feathers, it brought us the quets, it brought us the Ferrazinosaurus and so much more. So yeah, understandably the Dimetrodon isn't the most noticeable dinosaur or creature, prehistoric creature actually, from the Dominion Biosyn expansion, however that could be different in your opinion but Generally, when I've talked to people about this DLC, we don't really mention the Dimetrodon too much. However, the Dimetrodon is extremely unique in Jurassic World Evolution 2, and I'm pretty sure that the answer as to why is going to be pretty obvious to some of you, but for those of you that aren't educated on your prehistoric creatures, the Dimetrodon is the only creature in Jurassic World Evolution 2 that isn't actually a dinosaur, and instead is a Dinapsid. And of course this does raise several questions, however one in particular we're going to be looking at today is could we potentially see more Dinapsids or even a non-dinosaur creature DLC in Jurassic World Evolution 2? But with that being said, before we get into it, if you do go on to enjoy today's video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Let's try and hit 30 likes on today's video. As I always say, it takes literally no effort for you. Yeah, it has um, pretty, pretty big impact on the channel, actually. So yeah, um, please do consider liking and subscribing, and with that being said, enjoy the video. So, with the Dimetrodon being the only non-dinosaur creature in Jurassic World Evolution 2 that isn't obviously an aquatic or flying reptile, it does make you think, could we actually see more non-dinosaur creatures or dinapsids in the not-so-distant future? And I know that one of the reasons the Dimetrodon primarily got added was because it appeared in Dominion. However, the fact that even it's in the game does, you know give Frontier a pretty good opportunity to add more non-dinosaur creatures. And you know, Frontier being Frontier, or just generally any games company, they're going to want to give their game the longest lifespan possible, and the way to generally do that in a building simulation game is by DLCs, and when I tell you I've come up with at least 20 ideas for DLCs for this game, I'm not joking, just check the channel. However, if I did have to rank every DLC idea I've come up with in terms of likeliness, I'd actually put this DLC idea quite high up because I don't see it at all not being in the game. I'm generally convinced that at some point down the line we will get a non-dinosaur DLC. It's too good of an idea to just not implement, especially considering how much, you know, people are demanding certain creatures in this game, which I'll get to in a minute. And yeah, it's just the perfect way to introduce them. And with that being said, the first non-dinosaur creature I think that should be in this DLC is the Megalodon. Now, call me ambitious, but this is the perfect time for Frontier to implement the Megalodon, especially considering this is a DLC dedicated to non-marine reptiles and, you know, sort of branching off into those other genus regions. And funnily enough, in the first video I ever made where I actually spoke, I asked for the Megalodon, so I think, you know, as I say, and as I will say a hundred more times in this video, if there's a time to introduce the Megalodon, it's a DLC where it's the perfect chance to introduce the Megalodon. It's easily top 5 for most demanded creatures in Jurassic World Evolution 2, and for that reason, I reckon that if we do get this, as I say, and again, as I will say loads more times, if we do get this non-dinosaur DLC, I reckon that, again, it's the perfect time to introduce the Megalodon. So what's up? You probably want the Megalodon. I know a vast majority of the people on this channel do because, you know, some of my most viewed videos do include Megalodons in the thumbnail, funnily enough. But again, odds are a creature you want to see in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is the Sarcosuchus. Or other prehistoric crocodilians like the Ometriocanthus or, you know, Dinosuchus, stuff like that. Basically the same genus though, that sort of crocodilian sort of ideology. <laughs> However, just because it's the easiest to pronounce prehistoric crocodilian name, for continuity, I'm just gonna say Sarcosuchus. And you know, alongside the Dinosuchus, it is definitely again an anticipated creature that people aren't so much expecting in the game as opposed to want, but still, I, you know, alongside the Megalodon, I feel like this DLC is one of the best ways to really introduce these new creatures if they don't do, you know, sort of set semi-aquatic DLC kind of thing. 
we've already seen similar designs with the Lyopleurodon, and I know that that's not at all sort of hinting at crocodiles or prehistoric crocodiles in Jurassic World Evolution 2. However, you know, it shows that they've got a pretty creative mindset when it comes to design. So if we did get a Sarcosuchus or Dinosuchus at some point, at least the designs would be nice. Which does bring me on to another point, and that's that if we did get this Sarcosuchus, Dinosuchus, Metriocomphus, stuff like that, it would be able to introduce semi-aquatic capabilities. Now I get that's incredibly ambitious for me to say considering that pterosaurs can't even walk in this game. However, you know, I feel like a semi-aquatic spino, the spino being semi-aquatic is canon, and it would also prevent the dimetrodons from when they go in water just sort of looking like they're swimming, but it's just because they're so small that they actually sink under the water. But again, I kind of consider that a semi-aquatic because, again, they are, you know, in Dominion shown to be semi-aquatic and just generally a semi-aquatic creatures. The Megalodon and Sarcosuchus by themselves would probably be one of the best-selling DLCs in this game just because of what it would mean for Jurassic World Evolution 2 on a whole. And looking at the animations in games like the Isle for Sarcosuchuses, or more specifically Dinosuchuses, the animations that we could have for JWE2 would just be so sick and the idea of having one in my parks just seems so cool to me. So again, Frontier, Gen Zeric, whoever may be watching this video in the off chance, please just add this DLC for the community's sake. And now moving on to a creature that I've mentioned so many times in the past, but I feel again this DLC as it will be for many creatures that I don't mention in this video, is a really good opportunity to introduce them. And another creature that the fans have perhaps wanted, not so much as others that are, you know, similar, but it's the Woolly Mammoth. Now, so far in this video, I've said ambitious about three times. However, if anything is going to be ambitious, it's going to be getting Cenozoic creatures. And I've even made a video showcasing my idea for a Cenozoic DLC and how it could be implemented. And you know, if we do follow a similar sort of lineup, and that is how Frontier decide to take it, if they ever do a Cenozoic DLC, then in theory, this is how we get the Woolly Mammoth. However, this is all, you know, in my sort of mindscape where I lay things out and how Frontier should approach it, whether or not it is how they do it, if they ever do do it, or, you know, if you have a different approach. This is just how I think they should do it. And as I mentioned a few videos back, if, you know, and the more likely DLC we get as opposed to this one, being the Manticorp DLC, that would be the perfect way to introduce the Smilodon. Then we get the Smilodon, we get Cenozoic creatures, so on and so forth. And if we do get the Smilodon, then in a certain sense, that does sort of confirm that we'll be getting more Cenozoic creatures because it's not like you're just going to stop production on a game with one genus. I mean, look, we've got the Quetzalcoatlus being the only flying large reptile in the game at the moment. And I reckon that at some point in the future we'll get Hatsagoptrixes. I have no doubt in my mind. That is just my opinion. But again, I don't see why you'd have one creature in that genus. It just doesn't make sense. So, you know, assuming we do get that Manticorp DLC in a similar layout where it does introduce the Smilodon, it's, you know, it's the perfect opportunity, as I've said loads of times already, to either introduce the Woolly Mammoth, you know, if it not be in this DLC, then in, you know, its own Cenozoic DLC, as I say. So either way, take it as you will, and um, yeah. However, for my last, almost said dinosaur there, for my last non-dinosaur reptile, I've gone for the Lystrosaurus. Now, likewise with most of the creatures in this list, it's, or the Lystrosaurus rather, is one of the most wanted creatures in Jurassic World Evolution 2, alongside stuff like the Atrociraptor, or the dinosaurs that we didn't see in Dominion. However, to quote myself there, most of the creatures that people want from Dominion are dinosaurs. However, the Lystrosaurus is actually a therapsid, meaning a mammal-like reptile, also meaning that it fits into this DLC rather well. So the ongoing theme with my idea for this DLC is that Frontier are just giving us things that we ask for in a manner that, you know, works. And better yet, the Lystrosaurus is literally compy sized so it means that if Frontier did decide to make this DLC, they wouldn't need to go overboard in the pricing and it could just be another £12 DLC. And you know, considering the creatures I've mentioned in this, that does seem like a relatively fair price for the content suggested. And again, as I say, because it's, you know, or well, not necessarily the DLC, but the creatures I've suggested in today's video are so demanded, it sort of just makes sense that Frontier would do this kind of DLC, albeit, you know, a non-dinosaur DLC or something entirely different. It would just make sense for them to take this approach with it. 
Well, let me know your thoughts down in the comments as I do love hearing what you lot have to say. As I've mentioned at the beginning, let's try and hit 30 likes on today's video. It would mean an awful lot to me and that's all from me. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one.